Executives, technologists, and change makers, you can play a crucial role in driving real progress in a way that future-proofs your organization by making it more resilient, agile, and sustainable. As David Attenborough recently said, we are at a unique stage in our history. Never before have we had such an awareness of what we are doing to the planet, and never before have we had the power to do something about that. Surely, we all have a responsibility to care for our blue planet. The future of humanity, and indeed all life on Earth, now depends on us. To help us understand how executives can prioritize best understand sustainability, we are joined in our final session of the day by two women who have dedicated Elena Moratini is a geologist with a PhD in isotope geochemistry and a background in research, design and development, RD&D, in the energy industry. Recognizing that climate change represents one of the greatest challenges for business leaders today, Globant recently launched the Sustainable Business Studio to provide organizations with knowledge and expertise to be ready for the green economy. The studio, led by Elena, for building climate roadmaps and sustainability preparedness. Elena and her team support Globant and its clients in building successful and measurable business strategies to fight climate change and optimize sustainable organizations through green IT and new sustainable performance indicators. She is joined today by another incredible woman, Alexandra Pout. As Executive Vice President, Chief Corporate Responsibility Officer of L'Oreal and Executive Vice President, Alexandra's mission is to ensure that L'Oreal collectively goes beyond the transformation of their business model to build a more inclusive and sustainable world. A lawyer by training, Alexandra has worked for Amnesty International in Germany and at organizations specializing in diversity, change management and sustainability. Please welcome to the Converge Europe 2021 stage, Elena Moratini and Alexandra Pout. Thank you very much. And uh, let me first of all, very warmly welcome to Converge Europe 2021, our special guest, Alexandra Pout who is one of the global leaders and key thinkers in sustainability and climate change and many other aspects that we will discover through this, uh, uh, through this sharing and uh, fire chat. So, Alexandra, very welcome to have you here. Very happy, very honored. Alexandra is Executive Vice President. Me. Yes, very honored to have you here today with us. Alexandra is Executive Vice President and Chief Corporate Responsibility Officer at L'Oreal. And Alexandra is also on L'Oreal. before one of the key thinker and global leaders in, in sustainability. And this is what we would like very much to hear from you today so that we can learn, share, and somehow exploit your thinking and, and, and move on based uh, also on this discussion. So we're very glad that you've accepted to be with us today at this Convert, Com Convert Europe 2021 by Globant. And um, I would really like to dig in some of the most uh, somehow uh, robust and serious aspects of sustainability as it is uh, business legitimacy. So um, those strategies that we think confer to business, the legitimation of business itself through human, technical and financial aspects of sustainability and climate change. And I think that before going into the few questions that we have for you, uh, I'd like to remind how uh, uh, L'Oreal has done 
a lot in this respect in terms of sustainability, having always people centered in through any process that concern sustainability linked to business. So people, I understand you say, are your greatest assets. And uh, in this respect, it is really for us very important to have you and L'Oreal represented today because we think that uh, through this discussion, we can be better at shaping our sustainable future and the sustainable future of the world as your foundation has as a sort of a slogan and, uh, and a proposal. So uh, my first question to you, Alexandra, is um, about powerful messages. Uh, because I'm worth it, it's one of your powerful messages of the moment. And uh, we think that powerful messages, especially the disruptive one, can represent a very powerful tool for all of us to think forward and to understand better and maybe to make a jump into our current understanding in, in a more of a, a disruptive way somehow to say. So we wanted to ask you if you had any idea or message that you think that at the moment capture your attention in terms of power for um, powerfulness for what is the decade of action that we're going through in terms of climate and sustainability. Yeah, so, well, first of all, thank you very much for your invitation and for having me. I'm um, very flattered by your introduction, but I do not consider myself as one of the most powerful thinkers of sustainability. I hope we have our contribution, I have my contribution, but there are a lot of people out there have a very, very intro doing very interesting work in the field, on the ground. Let's not forget that uh, today already we have hundreds of thousands of victims of climate change uh, who fight on a daily basis for survival, uh, for livelihood, and uh, um, have very often to, to leave uh, their, the area where, where they lived and grew up and are having their economic activities. So these are heroes on an everyday basis, and I think we, we should uh, pay them our tribute um, from my uh, place. So there are many powerful messages. Thank you for citing I'm worth it. I'm worth it. It's not just a message of the moment. It's a message for a long, very long time of our brand L'Oreal Paris. And it's a very feminist message. Um, uh, when you think uh, of the um, of the starting of this message, it was it started uh, in the 70s, you know, when all ads on shampoo or beauty products were actually about uh, Take this product so that you can please or your man or your that you you're, you are uh, um, beautiful in order to to seduce. And it's true that the message I'm worth it is about I'm beautiful for myself. And I think that is very much introducing also the history of L'Oreal and our strategy about women empowerment and so on. So this is still valid. I'm I agree with you. I'm worth it is. Uh, important uh, message for all women around the world. Regarding sustainability, uh, I think there is there are many messages, you know, of uh, building back better, of uh, planetary boundaries and so on. But I think what is for me really what people have to understand and which is very important is that um, we are talking about keeping a safe operating space for humanity. We are not talking about protecting the planet in order to protect the planet or um, to, uh, to, make, um, to, to talk about uh, detail. Uh, we are talking about uh, keeping a safe operating space for humanity. If we are not able to keep climate change under 1.5 degrees, if we cannot stop biodiversity loss, um, if we are not able to change our economies to circular economies, we will not have the safe operating space for humanity. And I think this is really important for people to understand. So I think there was a tipping point in understanding climate change and environmental issues with the Paris Agreement in 2015. But we still have to, to deliver that message that people are aware that we are talking about the survival of the human species. Um, in 
uh, in this context. And I think that is a powerful message that has to be repeated. Oh, excellent, excellent. Very, very clear, very clear about the operating space that needs to be protected and needs to be uh, really indeed uh, favored through all the actions that we're taking uh, for climate change and sustainability. I acknowledge what you said about the heroes of the moment. I think that that is very important and very just that we recognize uh, the suffering and the problems that uh, the whole issue of climate change is actually uh, putting lots of uh, risk and exposure to uh, many uh, part of the global population at the moment. And, and of course, I think that as, as from your place and our places of, of leaders or those that can uh, convey messages, it is very important that that message is as loud and clear as you just said. So thank you very much for that, Alexandra, and for the acknowledgement uh, about heroes and about the the sort of evergreen message just changing its, uh, its sort of uh, uh, context, historical and social context so about the message from, from L'Oreal. So um, another question that we have for you, I don't know if you agree with me, but this term of converge, it's a very important and deep-rooted uh, type of uh, action in, in action and concept. So a, a robust concept uh, uh, full of meanings that um, somehow we would like to understand for you how, where, and in what respect you think that we should converge or converge bearing technology as one of the uh, vectors for this convergence. Yeah, so I think uh, what, what, you know, for a long time, companies have thought about every issue in terms of competition, of being the best, being the first, uh, while well, our whole economic system and performance economy um, and performance society was built on that. And now we are entering a, a, de a decade, a century, not just a decade, a century, where everything is going to be about cooperation. Because honestly, I do not think that anyone wants to be alone facing right. climate change. So I personally, I don't want to be the one company fighting climate change at the best level of performance. I don't want to be that individual either. So the more we are, the many we are, the better we are off because nobody, you know, we are all small. When you look at climate change, when you look at biodiversity loss, we are all small. So nobody wants to be alone in this. We want to be many. And I think that is something where we have to change our mindsets and where people change mindsets and we see more and more cooperation between companies, um, multi-stakeholder cooperation, public-private partnerships. And um, that is exactly what is needed, you know. And when we talk about environmental issues, when we talk about climate change fighting, when we talk about low carbon economy, circular economy, recycling streams, when we talk about uh, uh, preserving or restoring biodiversity, but also when we talk about living wage in our supply chains, all these are issues where we want to be many. And I think here we have this uh, conversion, converging of interests and stakes, and that is a new um, form of, uh, uh, of society and of uh, leading companies and of leadership. We all have to work together, and I think this is very important. And of course, in this working together, technological solutions are going to play a role. We have to find issues, uh, solutions to issues such as uh, uh, plastic recycling. We have to find solutions to restoration of ecosystems. We will have to find solutions on many, many issues, and technology is going to play a central part in this. But also here, the interesting issue is going to be how are we going to share them, how are we going to cooperate, how are we going to um, succeed this enormous challenge of a society and economy of cooperation and not just of individual performance. Yes, it's like it's like saying this project is too big to be shared by, not to be shared, and, and the burden of the project is also very, uh, somehow very intense. So we all need a, a technical, scientific and, and political cooperation. And uh, we say, we, 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 we somehow uh, rephrased uh, a tutu tango sentence that, that, of course, coming from an Argentinian company, has a lot of meaning. We changed it into, this is a three to tango arena in which you have basically civil society together with public uh, organizations 
and, and of course, private enterprises. So we think that this three to tango is the one that can actually help us also understand that we're all breathing under the same atmosphere. So it is very important that we consider this as a shared task and a common task. So thank you very much for, for your answer. And actually, our latest report, which is called indeed Navigating the Sustainability uh, Era, uh, focuses a lot on the new approaches of partnership. So I don't know if you want to share with us some of your uh, ideas of actions from L'Oreal in respect to this, or if those are already implied in what you've said about circular economy, of course, biodiversity and, and all the issue about plastic, or if there is something that you would like to uh, to have us focus our attention on in terms of actions from L'Oreal. Yeah, so I think there are many, you know, uh, we, we in, in, indeed we have started in 2013 our sustainability journey uh, to a new business model. And so we have quite progressed and what we see is very clearly that we have to involve our ecosystem. For us, it's extremely important also to cooperate with our suppliers, you know, because there are many things, I think, and one of the things, so we have succeeded our first generation of targets mm -hmm. quite well, you know. We have outperformed, for example, on carbon emission reduction. Uh, we have reduced our carbon emissions in uh, our industrial activity by 80%. Or, um, while growing by 37%. So we have succeeded to, deco uh, color uh, to decouple our carbon emissions from our growth. Uh, we have Im improved the environmental footprint of our products. So we have succeeded a lot of things. But uh, what is interesting is that, of course, also L'Oreal is small when we look at climate change. Um, so what is interesting is to how much do we influence our ecosystem? How much do we bring to the world? And what we see is very clearly that our suppliers and our competitors are strongly influenced, uh, of course, by what does the number one of the beauty sector. And so it was very interesting to see, you know, one of the, the big success moments I felt in my career was when I received the letter of a CEO. No, it was in a conversation, actually. And the, the CEO of another beauty company said to me, ah, yeah, we are progressing, but we have not yet our L'Oreal for the future, you know? So we have not yet our vision that is going to be the And I was like, wow, this is becoming a brand, you know? The, 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 the ambition of L'Oreal is the level is considered as a level of comparison. And there I saw that we have some impact on others. And our suppliers sometimes, they sent letters and they said, well, the thing we love about uh, your commitment to sustainability is that you challenge us, but you also embark us in this uh, in this journey, and you help us, and we we do a lot of learning expeditions and training and different tools to help them move also. And that, of course, for us, that is so important because, well, first of all, it determines our partnership with suppliers, but it's also meaning that we have some influence on our ecosystem and our value chain, and that will lead, to, um, of course, to more companies' commitment to a huger impact on the environment. And there now we have a new issue uh, that we promote a lot with other companies and with our suppliers, which is living wage in the whole supply chain. Meaning um, that we do not anymore uh, want just minimum wage, we want living wage. Uh, we want our suppliers to pay also living wage to their employees, which means a living wage is a wage that allows people um, to lead a decent life and cover their basic needs for themselves and their dependents, meaning two to, to three children. And so I think this is completely changing also the world. It could change the world economy with, uh, you know, in a way uh, we, we, we go through this with other companies and with our suppliers and, is really and interesting. And I think that this is fascinating what you're saying because indeed it's, it's like an engine that basically brings about the whole uh, center of the just transition mechanism. It need, needs to be just. So it's not minimum anymore. It needs to be just in terms of uh, decent wages. And, and, I, and I guess that also, Alexandra, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the, the beauty of, of what you're doing today, beauty as in general terms, uh, is also linked to the fact that, of course, you have such a, um, a varied background in terms of also of your legal background, I understand, and your human rights, that, that you're in a position in which your sustainability is, is approach under a very holistic point of view in which you can bring in all this expertise and points of view so that you will make them actually 
efficient, effective, and, and strong for, uh, for the way you advocate the whole just transition and sustainability message, if, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, you're right, Elena. It's very important, I think, to be clear that the ecological transition has to happen Absolutely. in an inclusive society. We will not be able to convince people um, to fight for climate change and against biodiversity loss if they and their children are not eating. That is very clear. So there we have an enormous responsibility to make this transition, as you say, just or inclusive. Um, we cannot live in a system where two thirds of the world population Absolutely. think that the system is not working for them. Uh, so we have to make the system work for them and we have to be capable to lead this transition to a new, uh, to a green economy. Because, um, you know, very often people, I think what is really important to understand is that business cannot evolve in um, destroyed societies. Business cannot evolve. Business needs peaceful and functioning societies. Otherwise, this is not working for us either. Um, and so I think um, this is really important to understand that the stake is our human survival, but also the survival of our businesses, because this can just work, uh, as I said, in inclusive and, and sustainable possibly this, society. Th this aspect of inclusiveness, inclusiveness and diversity is, is also part of the um, of making our business uh, making sure that our businesses do not become stranded because because of course as you said if this is not shared by everybody it will never be uh, completely taken on board and and in that respect some business will become stranded if the message is not uh, sufficiently inclusive towards a new model of business and economy i guess that this is also something that that we can add. Yeah, it's very clear that um, we have to onboard our own employees, uh, but we have also to be very clear. So I think that the, there, there are many things uh, that are important in the moment. You know, we have just seen what the systemic crisis does to business and to world economy. And when we look at climate change, we know that this was a small crisis and that the next one is going to be uncomparable, more serious uh, climate crisis is going to bring systemic changes that are going to be much more uh, difficult to go through than the COVID. And I think this is the reason why um, even with COVID and economic crisis, sustainability issues didn't Absolutely. go away, but became just more important because people and businesses understood what is going to happen to us. Huh? How is this going to look like? So we just had a little avant goût, uh, a little taste of what is going to come. So I think this is really important. And I think what is interesting is that now everybody is aware, you know, everybody, everybody, every business has climate targets, has uh, uh, in, in mind that there needs to be a commitment to fight climate change and biodiversity loss. But the real issues are now going to be acceleration and ambition. So uh, you cannot just, we cannot anymore just say, oh, we will reduce our carbon emissions by 60% or by 50% we have now to do what is needed and what is needed is science that tells us so every company has to have science-based targets Our, their carbon emission reduction has to be aligned with scientific knowledge of what needs to be done and i think a second point is apart from ambition and ambition has to be a complete transformation of business model the second one is acceleration you know, this is not anymore about I have understood and in some years I'll do something. This is, we have nine years left. So um, this is, everything is about acceleration and everything is going to be played. You know, the, the decisive issue is going to be acceleration because uh, nowadays companies, countries, cities, everybody has targets. And we know that if we do not accelerate, it's not sufficient. So I think that is the key message. And, and it's this two a, 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 ambition and acceleration, I think are, are very, it's a very relevant message for all of us and for the technology companies that I think really have the role and the possibility of accelerating any solution science-based to the decreasing of emissions. So in that respect, I think that um, for me, it is, it is very, Specifically for me at the moment, it is very uh, interesting and very compelling to be working for a technology company because we feel that uh, all those sustainabilities, as we call them, like a set of skills and a set of uh, a set of technologies, a set of services that can be pushed forward so that uh, 
we basically try to extend abilities from one company to the other through cooperation, through services, through many different ways of partnership, but somehow sharing that set of skills of abilities to be more sustainable. Um, in that respect, uh, Alexandra, we also think that uh, new roles, new figures, new teams are actually arising. I tend to call them carbon teams, for example, the ones that are, are leading the, the technology and the science behind uh, decreasing emissions. And also other roles like, for example, head of uh, uh, green finance or climate finance or sustainable finance. Do you th see something like this in L'Oreal of like changes through the organizations? Yeah, of course. We do have, yes, we do have things like that, of course. We do have, I think there is a difference. So there are new roles and new functions. You're right. So we, I have a sustainable, a chief sustainable finance officer or, um, you know, uh, of course, uh, biodiversity, there is a lot of impact investing. So there are new activities. So that is very clear. Then there are abilities, you call them sustainabilities, uh, and I, I like that very much. So these um, capacities, competences, everybody has to have them. It is not, this is not a team question, you know, this is not the sustainable development team. I say here, and I'm very clear about that also with the CEO of L'Oreal, I said, I, in 2030, my job is not going to exist anymore because uh, sustainability is going to be the way we do things. So this is going to be everybody's job and this cannot be a job of a department of a person. So I need to manage the transition. That is my responsibility. But then the job has to disappear because everybody has to do sustainability. So I develop in the moment careers so that people go through sustainability learning and sustainability function, but also capacities and competences so that they learn how to integrate that in their job. And then there is another issue that I think is very important, that is what leadership will look like in the 21st century. And that means what do you have as a leader, as an executive in a corporation, what kind of attitude, what kind of personality, what kind of competences, do you need to have in order to manage this huge moment of complete transformation we are going through? You know, I think that COVID was a beginning of this and that we will have to see much more. So what is about resilience, about recognition of, um, uh, of other people's lives and uh, living circumstances? What is about um, courage, about uh, thinking out of the box and being capable to make decisions that are not decisions right. that are just guided by financial performance, but decisions that take into account different paradigms, that take into account how much do we cost the environment as a company, how much do we cost society as a company. So what kind of leadership and of personal backbone every leader is going to need to have in order to go through um, oh, fantastic going to, to hear to this in, in such a holistic and, and, and complete and, and 360 degrees uh, speech in respect to sustainability is something that really matters in terms of how we need to embed it. And as you said, we may need new jobs now, but we need to have a sort of decay out on these new jobs because it will need to be just the way of doing business in the future. So I will just uh, ask you a couple of more questions and then go to one uh, a bit more personal. Um, one is about disruption. Do you think that um, we, we are a digital disruptive company? Do you think that disruption has a, a relevance in all this that we're talking about? Yeah, so I think disruption has, of course, and technical innovation has. But there also I have two perhaps points that are a little bit slightly different because my issue is first um, disruption, you know, through digital and technology, we are too much used to disruption. You know, like disruption is not coming every day like this, you know, uh, for a disruptive beauty product that takes some time and for some disruptive 
sustainable innovation that needs time and we will not come up every morning with a disruption that brings solution to the world crisis we are facing and we are heading to. So I think we have to be aware that we need innovation, that we need, um, of course, technologies uh, and disruptive technologies, but we also have to be aware that we will have to change lifestyles. We will have to change our ways of looking um, at um, economy. We lived in a waste stage economy, so we have to work on efficiency, we have to work on circularity, and we have to work on disruption. But this cannot be the only solution because disruption does not come ev up every day miraculously. You know, that's a lot of work behind it and a lot of time very often behind it. And then there is always something I say um, I here is that, you know, for a long time, innovation uh, was considered uh, under an aspect of um, progress. It had to bring social progress. It had to bring progress to humanity. And in some point in history, innovation became an end in itself, a target in itself. And it was innovation for innovation. Now we need innovation for progress. We need innovation for humanity. We do not need innovation just for innovation. And I think that is also a very, very important part, which of course gives a lot of sense of purpose to researchers, to um, to 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 technic to technology people, because right. now in so, so somehow what you're saying, Alexandra, is that no program. action can end in the action itself. It, it's not enough that that it's just a somehow self-centered. It needs to be part of this whole transformation altogether. And I completely agree on what you said about disruption. It takes time to produce a, a disruptive innovation. It's, it's like it, somehow it's our d and it's research, it's time, it's dedication, it's lab, it's experiments. But I think that in that respect, well, our angle on green IT, for example, trying to produce uh, IT products that are always more energy efficient. efficient. So in that respect, uh, of course, saving energy has a direct impact on emission is also one of the, of the lines that we're trying to progress and move forward in terms of disruption, but in terms of uh, our DND, as, as I was saying. So thank you very much for that. And uh, one last question would be about your starry career. We talked about career, we talked about positions and jobs. Um, I don't know if you would like to share with us. I tend to think um, I'm a person that needs to have some sort of a, a amusement while working. I think that we're very lucky in, in working with sustainability because it's definitely such a fascinating topic and, and, and also um, intriguing in terms of innovation and what we can do and, and the general message. But sometimes I feel that uh, there are small spots in our paths that, that uh, despite the fact that there may be somehow funny or a little bit ridiculous or a little bit of a pitfall then determined a trigger for something else that came out better in the end and that maybe we tend to somehow forget because we always look at, at, at more successful steps more than pitfalls that then in the end could determine something else. I don't know if you have something to share with us in that respect. If, if the question doesn't, doesn't fit, don't worry, but it's just, just to know you a bit more. So I think, yeah, um, every every um, career, uh, you know, from an executive, a high level uh, position uh, needs resilience. You know, life is never just made out of, of success, but of failures. And in French, we have a saying, a saying that it's through, the, through the, the scars that the light comes in. So I think there is, of course, always um, uh, failure is very rich. I think um, what I would probably share in this context is more that, you know, when COVID arrived, I was really worried because I thought, well, the world now, how is it going the world to think about sustainability? You know, everybody's going to stay, uh, think um, about uh, economic crisis, health crisis, uh, um, about new pandemias and so on. And I was really, so I was very worried in the beginning and I thought, well, this is the end of, uh, of humanity. We are not going to, to fix this because uh, this is going to be short term. And actually I was completely wrong. And that is a real interesting momentum for me in, in history that um, actually this systemic crisis led to huge awareness and to 
the opposite, you know, um, to, to more commitment, to more demand for sustainability, to, um, and I think also to a renewal of mankind and its relationship to nature. And I think this is very important because uh, the origin of all this is that we thought that nature is just here to serve us and that we can exploit it and that it's the, the man is the, the dominator of nature and has, has to use it as the skies. And I think now people understand that ecosystem services are much more um, than just uh, uh, ingredients or just, uh, you know, trees uh, for, uh, for, uh, uh, for paper, but that we need to be living in this ecosystems, that we need them in order for our psychological, for our physiological balance and so on. So there is a renewal in the relationship with all the living around us, with, with nature and um, with ecosystems. And I think this is going to bring a huge change. So I think that the that coronavirus and the lockdown and the, the whole uh, uh, the whole uh, pandemia led to a, a huge huge change in the direction of the world, and I was not seeing that, so um, I'm very positively surprised and humbled because um, you know uh, you always have to be open to to new transformations. Uh, absolutely, and 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 possibly on on these lines we can leave your your final message to the audience and uh, I have just uh, of course I would like to thank you deeply for what you've shared with us I would like to emphasize what you've said about ecosystems that so that we all think that ecosystem goes way beyond the etymology of the world it's a system it's a spherical system 360 degrees in which we all need to operate living and 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 of course having businessing operating in it so uh, be very careful about the recreation and reformulation of this new ecosystem after the the coronavirus pandemic and maybe alexandra if there was indeed one positive aspect of this dramatic times that we've been through is possibly that awareness and consciousness that you've been talking about. So I don't know if you want to add anything else on our behalf. We would like to thank you very much. We hope that, as we said at the beginning, there could be uh, space for uh, open cooperation and collaboration at any time between beauty and technology. And we're really glad that we could have the space with you and your time uh, to understand your clear views and, and uh, your strong messages in, in an optimistic and uh, way forward uh, leading. So thank you very much for that. And the floor is yours thank for you. any final remark. Yes, uh, thank you very much. So I think uh, what we have to be aware, everything is now uh, a question of balance and complexity. I know that we all live uh, in societies where of, very often complex thinking is um, left behind, neglected. Um, so I do think there is room for optimism. There is definitely room for hoping that there are coming new technological solutions, um, innovations that will bring us further. But I think we also have not to live in the illusion to tell yeah, well, you know, sometimes when we are worried and thinking about all this, we think, well, technology and innovation will bring us uh, the solution. This is not going to be enough. I think we have also to do the, the work of asking ourselves how we have to transform our lifestyles, how we have to transform economies, how we have to transform societies so that it can work for everybody and that it can guarantee the safe operating space for, for us and future generations. And so there are no easy solutions. Um, there are only complex solutions, and, uh, but complex thinking will help us to get out of this. I, I, I hope so, and I believe in it. And so thank you for inviting me, and thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Ciao. Thank you, Elena and Alexandra. Before we move from the guest speaker sessions and into the breakout sessions, I'd like to thank you for joining us here at Globant's Converge Europe 2021 event. I hope it's inspired you to reinvent your organization, to transform it into an augmented organization with a sustainable business strategy 
which harnesses the power of artificial intelligence to create new and more engaging experiences. Now, it's choose your own adventure time. In a moment, you'll be able to select one of three breakout sessions to attend next. Seeking Cultural Reinvention is a roundtable discussion that will cover the future of workplace, personalized employee experience, well-being, and conscious companies. Meanwhile, Gaming Goes Into Pharma will get you inspired by showing you how gaming industry best practices have been used to gamify the patient experience. Or maybe marketing is more your thing, in which case you can attend the MarTech and digital sales session to discover the market trends that can help your organization reach its growth targets while leveraging digital experiences. My name is James Taylor, keynote speaker on creativity, innovation, and artificial intelligence. And it's been my great pleasure being your host for Globant's Converge Europe 2021 event. Be well, and I look forward to seeing you again at a future Globant event.